this contingency, we've got problem, we've got solution. Here it is certain, here it is uncertain. So if it is certain problem, certain solution, you go with this. Uncertain, certain, you go here. Uncertain, uncertain, you go here. And certain, uncertain, you go here. Are you guys okay with this? Let me ask you a question here. If you have an uncertain problem and an uncertain solution, what do you do? Garbage. You go garbage can. You don't know the problem. You don't know the solution. Garbage can. Try. Maybe something will work. Now, this is what they says. It says here, if you are an individual, then maybe you go bargain, you judge, you inspire, you imitate. See what other people are doing, you do the same. Does that happen to you? You fail, you don't know why you failed, you ask your friends, what do you do? Now, if you are in a, in a company, maybe you want to try the Karenji, maybe get along with other people in the company and see what is our problem. Uh, incremental decision model. And it evolves, if those doesn't work, you go the garbage can model, okay? What happens, let me ask you another question. Uh, if you are certain about your problem and you are uncertain about your solution, then you will go to three, right? That's when, if you're an individual, you can try. Maybe you find a solution. If you're a company, you try the incremental. You try to solve them like a step-by-step, -step. okay? Uh, now, here, if it is uncertain problem and the solution is clear, you go your bargain, coalition, you form it. And according to the, if you're an organization, you do the Karanji model. You guys know what's the Karanji model? Karanji model, it means you go and you talk to other people and get them to help you solve the problem. Because you, you can't do it alone. Any questions on this framework? Go ahead. Um. Can you give me an example, like when you're stuck with a problem and how you're supposed to solve it, like that has to do with business? Yeah, let's see. One, two, three, or four. Which one do you want an example for? Yeah, we'll start with number one. Starting with number one. Let's say that you're a company. Uh, you are here, uh, let's say, a cashback manager. And uh, you have a problem. Customers are not coming in. So what do you do? Now, if you do the that rational approach, you go uh, do a survey, do a statistics, customers, why are you not coming? And they answer yes or no. You take all of these statistics, you analyze them. Oh, customer service is very bad. And that's what we call management science, okay? Number two, customers are not coming in and you don't know why, okay? And you know, you do the survey, you don't get anything clear. What is the problem? So here you have an uncertain problem, okay? So it says here you try the Canon GM model. Maybe get all of your employees, sit together. You know, what do we do to let customers come? Employees says, let's do customer service. Some people say, no, let's do marketing. Let's go do advertising so people learn about us. We have two ideas. The problem is not very clear. Is it customer service or is it people don't know? Do you see? So here you need to do a coalition. You need to talk to all of the employees, convince them all that our problem is customer service, and then you go, you do the customer service. And you know customer service will you know, solve this problem because customer service is a certain solution you see third example here in number three it says uh, we do we don't have customers so we do the survey we get customer service as the problem we don't have good customer service now the solution is not clear how do we do customer service because we have been doing customer service and it's not working so here you want to do trial and error Let's see, maybe we change the people. Maybe customer service, maybe we give people something to wear the same. Maybe the employees, we pay them higher salaries. You do it step by step. From, from the inside? From the inside, you do it step by step. You try customer service, you try give people employees training, you try to uh, give people, change the people, 
uh, maybe uh, increase the number of hours. You try because the solution is not clear. The customer service has a problem, but we're not sure what is the solution to fix our customer service. Number four, customers are not coming to us. We don't know why they're not coming to us. And we don't have an idea where to go to fix it. Then we do the garbage can. You see, maybe we fire all the people, get new people. Some managers, they come and say, hey, let's fire all the people, get new people. Another manager says, let's change all of the computers. Maybe when they change the computers, it solves another problem. It may not solve the problem. Maybe customers come, maybe customers don't come. Another manager comes and says, hey, let's do internet banking. You see, hoping that this is going to solve the problem. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Do you see? Because you're in a situation where your problem is not very clear and the best route to take it is not also very clear. So you start with the car entry, you know, try to get all the people to agree. Do it incrementally, you try. Incremental, it's, you try. Works good, doesn't it? And then uh, you go and you uh, do the garbage can, okay, if those two fail. Got it? There are questions? All right, so here we've got some special decision circumstances. Today's environment presents high-stake decisions that must be made quickly. Managers must deal with these. You guys know what is high-velocity environment? The world is changing very quickly, so you need to be able to respond very quickly. Learning from your decision mistakes. You make a mistake, you learn. Next time you don't do it again. Understanding cognitive and personal biases. Do you guys know what's a personal bias? Sometimes if you're a manager, you have a, you have a bias. You know that you're not good in customer service. So you need to be aware of that. What's up, uh, Zaid? Everything is okay? So here we've got, you need to understand your biases. Uh, do you guys know the escalation of commitment? Prospect theory, group think, evidence-based management, and encouraging distance and diversity. Do you guys know these? The first one, escalation of commitment. Uh, remember the escalator? From the uh, introduction to management class? That's the same thing. You know, for example, you know, uh, you know, you're, you know, Ali is committed. Now, his commitment is now is escalating. You see, he needs to bring the paper. If he doesn't bring the paper, he needs to find another solution. You see, and he continues more, more, more. Sometimes you need to understand your biases. If you're not capable, you need to come to me and say, hey, I cannot take the attendance anymore. Please, give me a break. Do you feel this way, Ali, or no, you still can do it? <laughs> you don't feel like that? You don't feel too much pressure? Because sometimes you wake up in the morning, you say, I forgot the paper! Do you see? And then you, it becomes like a worry. If you reach this situation, then you need to say, stop. I will not take the attendance anymore. I quit. Do you see? Maybe I let someone else to do the attendance. Do you see? Uh, so you need to understand your cognitive and personal biases. Do you see? Or maybe you feel, no, I want to continue working on this and I will catch it with my hands and legs because I want to do the attendance every day and therefore you need to understand that it's a bias. Any other question on these five? By the way, so we're doing it, this is a review for this chapter, so all the students here have taken this class. Have you taken the BMGT 200, which is Introduction to Management class before? Introduction to what? To Management. Uh, no, sir. You have not then taken, ah, oh, this is an advanced class. All of these people have passed an Introduction to Management full course. You, you normally take this class after. Uh, maybe you need to go and attend the 200 class. What year is this?